Welcome back. Our next chapter is Chapter 7, Inventory and Cost of Goods Sold. Inventory is held by all kinds of businesses for immediate sale or to be used to produce something else. And we're going to explore different types of inventory, but no matter what kind it is, uh, keep in mind that it's going to be something that's ultimately sold to somebody else. So inventory is different in this way from something else like supplies, which is used in the course of business, but not used to actually sell to someone else. So there's two main types of inventory. The first one is merchandisers. Now merchandisers or merchandising companies, they purchase finished goods from suppliers for immediate resale to customers. So think about like Kohl's, the, the clothing store here in town in Bowling Green. The clothing store, Kohl's, buys finished goods like shirts, pants, shoes, things like that to sell to, sell to its customers. Those are finished goods that Kohl's buys and then sells those same finished goods to its customers. But on the other hand, manufacturers actually buy raw materials from a supplier and take those raw materials and actually convert them or use them to br produce something else. There's some sort of conversion factor going on with those materials that manufacturers change the materials into something else and then sell a finished good to a customer. So Sara Lee cakes, the one you see in the grocery store and maybe the frozen section, those cakes are produced by Sara Lee. Sara Lee has an inventory of um, ingredients like sugar, flour, eggs, things like that. And then they take those raw, raw ingredients, those raw materials, and they actually use them to produce or convert them into something else, produce something else. And so they produce and sell a finished goods other than what they had originally bought from their suppliers. So the merchandise inventory that merchandisers have is just one single kind of inventory. It's the same finished good they buy and then pass on to their customer. But manufacturing companies, they have inventory that's comprised of three different types. They have raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. So let's look at each one of those. Raw materials are the materials used to make the product. Those are the materials that, that the manufacturers get directly from their suppliers. Work in process consists of units of product that are partially complete, but will require further work to be saleable to customers. So we think here of, in this car situation, the car is being worked on, it's got some labor, it's got some material, a handful of things have already been put into the actual producing it, but it's not done yet. And then of course the finished good consists of units of product that have been completed, but not yet sold to customers. We're going to focus on merchandise inventory in this class, but be aware that the concepts we cover apply equally to manufacturer's inventory as far as how things are sold. And we're going to explore manufacturer's inventory and managerial accounting. So if you're going to take that next semester, you'll explore a lot more raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. And then how the costs flow during those production phases. So because inventory will be used or converted to cash within one year, and it's a resource to the business, report it on the balance sheet as a current asset. When a company sells its goods, it removes the cost from their inventory account. Of course, because they sold something. It's coming out of inventory. We don't need an inventory anymore. At that point, it's reported on the income statement as an expense called the cost of goods sold, which makes sense. We sold something, and now we're just going to report the cost of the goods sold. So remember, we want to match our expenses with the same revenue when it's incurred. So when we sell something and make revenue, we will only then expense the cost of the inventory into that account called the cost of goods sold. And again, that shows up on our income statement. And every merchandise sale has two journal entries. One is to record the actual revenue, and one is to record the reduction of inventory. So in this example, we see the first entry to record a sale. We recorded the increase to our asset cash and an increase to the revenue for the amount of the selling price, $400. This should be familiar from when we covered the income statement and income statement entries. So then the second entry is a new one to us. It is to actually move the inventory out of uh, inventory account and then report it as an expense called the cost of goods sold. 
but we're going to record it at the cost of the inventory to the business. In this case, it was $350. So that inventory cost the business $350. But then we sold it for $400. So the profit in this transaction is $50. It's the difference between the revenue and then the cost of the goods sold. In this visual, we see the basic concepts going on with where our inventory actually goes. We will add our new inventory. Those are those purchases we make. We'll add those purchases to what we already had in inventory to get a goods available for sale during our period, whatever that may be, the month, the quarter, the year. Then over the course of operations, we will move the inventory that sells into the account called the cost of goods sold, or it will be retained for future sales in our inventory. So all those goods that were available for sale are either going to become part of our ending inventory, and we'll just keep it in our warehouse somewhere, or we've sold it, in which case it becomes a cost of goods sold. There are two ways to keep track of inventory. Either we just wait until the end of a period to physically count the inventory we have on hand, and then we solve for the inventory we sold, or we have a constant record of the cost of the goods sold. The first way of knowing what we have on hand is called the periodic inventory system. We periodically count our inventory and then solve for how much is sold. Now in perpetual inventory, we have a perpetual update on what has sold, so we solve for what our ending inventory is. These equations will become very handy for us. Now depending on if we're doing periodic or perpetual, we're going to have to solve for either the cost of goods sold or the ending inventory. Now let's explore four different methods to assigning value to our inventory and the cost of goods sold. The first method is specific identification. This is the easiest method for us to calculate a value for but the most difficult to actually track. Specific identification is used to value ending inventory and the cost of goods sold for the exact cost that was spent on each item. Since specific identification is so easy, can't we use it all the time? Not really. Specific identification is hard to use. When we sell a lot of inventory that has lots of different costs, it's going to be hard to track exactly how much that cost originally was to us. Another method, the FIFO method of inventory costing, is then based on an assumption that the accountant makes about the flow of inventory costs. These assumptions make it easier than just assigning the specific identification cost to each product. So FIFO means that we are going to assume the first products to stock the shelves are the first ones sold. First in, first out. Again, the products that were the first ones in, the first ones that stocked the shelves, are the first ones sold or first ones out the door. So think about the way milk sells in the grocery store. The first one on the shelves are pushed to the front of the window and when you come by to pick it up in the refrigerated window area, you pick up the one that has the date that's coming soonest. So you probably dig around and try to find a later date, but the thought process is the first ones to stock the shelves are going to be the first ones that people buy. So the first ones in are the first ones out. So in this little example here, there are three things purchased, one on May 3rd, one on May 5th, and one on May 6th. With FIFO, we assume that the first ones in are the first ones out. So if we were to sell two of these three, the two that sell are have the oldest dates, May 3rd and May 5th. And the one remaining would be the one with the most recent date, May 6th. First in, first out. LIFO is another method that we make assumptions about the, the cost and the flow of inventory. We assume that the last ones in are the first ones out. When you go to Walmart to buy a rotisserie chicken, there's a good chance you find the one that is the freshest or has the most recent cook date. This is the principle behind LIFO. The last ones that stock the shelves are the first ones out the door. So here are the same three items we saw before. Under LIFO, we assume that the last ones that came in, so May 6th and May 5th, are the ones that are going to be sold. And the oldest one is still there. The weighted average method uses the weighted average of the cost of goods available for sale for both the cost of each item sold and those remaining in inventory. If we have three units available for sale at a total cost of $250, 
$240. Then we when we sell one, we would expense $80. So instead of looking at each individual cost, so like May 6th had a cost of $95, we're going to assume each one of these now is just $80. We're going to assign a weighted cost to each one of those items. Consider the following information. If the goods available for sale consisted of three different units bought on different days at different prices, and then we sold two of those units, then the cost of those two units sold would be different for each of the inventory costing methods. Changing gears a little bit. Although we record items at cost to follow the cost principle, it is possible that the value of inventory may fall below its recorded cost. Our gap rules require us to have a conservative value on inventory on our books. The value of inventory can fall below its recorded cost for two reasons. One, it's easily replaced by identical goods at a lower cost, or two, it's become outdated or damaged. Now the first case is common for high-tech electronics. It happens all the time in that industry. As companies become more efficient at making these cutting edge products, they become cheaper to make. So in the beginning when we first started getting little iPods and, and MP3 players, they were very expensive to carry in inventory. They were expensive to make and they were expensive to have an inventory. But within a few short years, the cost was drastically cut. So companies that carried a large inventory for these products realized that their inventory probably wasn't worth as much as they thought it was. The second case commonly occurs with fad items or seasonal goods. So a couple years ago, tall boots were really in for girls and women, and now the smaller booty shoes are in. And you might laugh, but that has a big impact on accounting. That inventory that companies held for those seasonal items or those things that were trending one year might be a great inventory loss the next if they can't sell or their market value drops. So regardless of the inventory costing method used, all companies must report inventory at the lower of cost or of market. When the value of ending inventory falls because of lower replacement cost or outdated items, we should report the inventory at its market value rather than the higher cost amount. So this is known as the lower of cost or market, and you'll see that as an LCM. We call that LCM, the LCM rule. When we write down inventory from cost to market, we recognize a loss that will appear on the income statement. So here's an example. If you recall not too long ago, Lululemon, the makers of athletic clothing, had a little dilemma when it was discovered that their high-end yoga pants were obviously see-through. Immediately the value on the market for those pants dropped and Lululemon actually issued a recall. So because of the lower, or lower of cost or market rule, the market value for those pants, because they were see-through, and nobody really wants see-through pants when you're doing downward dog and yoga class, that market value dropped. The market value for the pants was actually much lower than the cost on the books. So there was a $17.5 million write-down that happened on their inventory because they wanted to report the lower of either the cost value or the market value, and in this case, the market value was lower. So the entry here for the inventory um, to be written down, because it was too high for these pants, Lululemon would have had to make an adjustment so that they would report the inventory of $17.5 million less and then expense it using the cost of goods sold account. So they'd expense it and it'd be a decrease to the stockholder's equity of $17.5 million. Their entry would be a debit to cost of goods sold and a credit to their inventory so they can actually write down that inventory and take it off of their balance sheet.